welcome back to the Director's Garage. I'm your host and resident idiot Michael, and today's What's in the Box is brought to you by Gold. Because today's product is said to be worth its weight in gold, if you believe the reviews anyway. But first, I've got a couple of headlines. The weekend has had it with the Grammys. Going forward, he has instructed his label not to submit his music for music's most prized recognition because he didn't get a single nomination in a year when he broke sales records, won over critics, and played on music's biggest stage, the Super Bowl halftime show. Okay, he's upset, I understand it. But what's really going on behind the scenes is a battle for the soul of the Grammys. The nominations are selected by a nonprofit group called the Recording Academy. As with other award shows, there's a perception based in fact that the Recording Academy shuts out black artists in the top categories. The last black artist to take home album of the year was Herbie Hancock in 2008. This has stars like Drake, Kanye, and The Weeknd upset. There's a growing list of artists who would like to see the process change. Now, I'm not one to take sides on things like this, but The Weeknd does have a valid point, and it's pretty glaring that no black artist has won album of the year in 13 years. It's a long time. There appears to be something going on behind closed doors, to the point where even music executives are wondering what's happening. My take on it is this. While it's true that the point of the Grammys is to award artists for doing great work, it's also true, and maybe even more important, that the Grammys celebrate and promote artists and music to inspire young musicians to follow their dreams. And on those points, the Recording Academy is failing. And that is your headline for today. And now it's time to find out what's in this box. That's, that's so stupid. Uh, this is yet another headphone purchased by the Director's Garage using Director's Garage funds. Basically, I kind of caved. <laughs> I heard all these great things about today's headphone, and I simply had to hear it. So... Stupid is as stupid is, and what we have here in this box, I'm excited to hear. Switchblade 327, lit cigarette in his hand. Got that one? That's Brian Setzer Orchestra, Switchblade 327 from 1998. Of course, he's talking about a car, but it'll do. Now, I can tell you that what's in this box is an over-ear design. I know I get some grief for doing too many IEMs, so you over-ear folks, this one's for you. I can also tell you that I dropped a major, major hint early on in the show. Did you catch it? Okay, here we go, and... Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> well, it gave it away right out of the bat there what it is. Um, it's the Gold Planer GL2000. Yes, the Gold Planer GL2000. Now, <laughs> this headphone has been getting rave reviews, and I mean rave reviews. One person said that if you're looking for a headphone $1,500 or less, look no further. This is the one to get. So we're going to find out today if they can wow me out of the box, and then we'll do a deep dive in a sound check coming up to see if they do indeed live up to the hype. So I think we're ready to show them off, and... Oh, okay. Well, it's kind of classy looking in here. Right off the bat, you've got these. These are kind of like a nylon kind of uh, headliner inside thingy. Maybe a little silk. These aren't neoprene, but it kind of has a neoprene feel to it. Uh, but And then kind of a pleathery, pleathery, leathery. It's pleather on the outside. Now let's take a look at the prize here. And, oh, these feel more like natural leather. And they've got little cupsiony, suctiony, cupsy little doodahs in, in the middle. So here's the actual size of the cup. And then look at the replacement pad. It's like, it's a different shape. So before we get to the wear and all of that, let's take a look. Let's dig deep in the box. There's a little baggie down here. Silica gel. 
wonder if people eat that stuff ever. Does, do kids eat it? Is that what the kids are doing these days? So let's see what's in the bag. We did what's in the box, now it's time to do what's in the bag. Oh, here's a cable. Okay, nice cable. This actually feels more like an IEM cable than, a, than an over-ear cable. So it goes eight weave down to four, two fours, and then they terminate at the small little two and a halfies at the end. So nice design, uh, feels good. Feels like it's a nice length too. Down below here, we've got a little piece of paper. This is like the build sheet or something. So let's pack up the industrial case. I love the flight case thing. I mean, this is, uh, we saw the Noble Audio Sultan also did this. And uh, I'm a big fan of these heavier cases. They're kind of rugged and you feel like you can just toss your gear around. And then uh, one other thing, I should point out that these two things were included in the box. So I don't know what these are. I'm gonna cut them open. All right, so what the hell's in here? This is, I think I'm, I'm I, you know, it's starting to make sense to me, but let's see what is actually, if I can. Okay, so this is a Chinese puzzle box. That's what this is. <laughs> Trying to make you figure out how to open it. Hey, look at that. And it's still a Chinese puzzle box. Uh, okay, what is this? This is, oh, it's an adapter. Just an adapter to go to three and a half. Oh, because this terminates in a 4.4. And number two is, oh, down to two and a half. If I want to run this off the SP-1000, this would be the adapter to do that. Okay, so let's take a look at the headphone now. That we'll get to the major thing here. Um, okay, these are obviously, it's gold planar. I would expect them. These are broken. <laughs> What's going on? What is up with this? <laughs> okay, I think they got a rotate. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> They're rotated now. A lot of weird flexi going on here. Kind of unusual. It's it's like Hi-Fi Man gone wrong. <laughs> There's a ton of spring to these. So let's try them on and shorten them up because, my God, there's... Look at this. There's a gap. Can you see that gap? That's, that's the gap that they came with. It's like the guy with the most unusual head in the world is wearing these, like, super massive, tall head. Okay. Uh, so they fit. They, you know, they don't feel... They feel comfortable. They're, they're not very heavy. They seem big on the cups on the inside. Uh, I don't see any problems with the comfort off the bat. Outside, we have these gold stripes that kind of define the headphone, it looks like. These are metal gold stripes across the side, and then there's like a metal plate behind it, where I assume the driver is, the membrane, and the, uh, and the uh, magnets. Okay, we are wired up and fired up now. <laughs> it's time to get some first impressions. What do you say? I'm gonna start with some rock. Super clear on the tops. It's a good bottom end. Not not boosted. They're not bass head, I don't think. Gobs of clarity. Very fast sound. Okay, that was <laughs> that was blaring rock, and I think it I think it sounded okay. I, I'm not totally sold on it just yet. I think there's a little bit of mid range going on here. Yeah, I'm going to the Bee Gees now. I'm trying something different. This is uh, Nights on Broadway. <laughs> These are really fast and they like to be played loud. Okay, I gotta say, I'm not terribly blown away by these. I think there's a little too much mid-range for my liking. They're, there's no gludginess, they're very clean. I need to find something that hooks up with these. I haven't heard something yet that's really maybe gone, wow. I'm going to Diana Crawl. Soft, glad ragdoll. Okay, that's better. There's still a, a mid range presence that I'm not all comfortable with. It's great imaging. Soundstage seems decent. Decent slam, not the deepest bass. 
just a little bit pushing too much mid-range for my taste but they're not bad they're really good they're getting better I want to break these in a bit maybe not crazy sub bass though just kind of there it's a nice bottom it's a nice bottom people say that about me all the time Okay, now we're going to some Abbey Road Beatles. The bass is nice and detailed. It's very tight, so I appreciate that. It's maybe not pushed as much as I would. I wish it was just a, that much more. But they're very fast. For, for their price, they're wicked fast. And the imaging is great. So I appreciate that part of it. The, the sound of the drums are really nice because of the speed of these headphones. Like, Ring's, Ringo's kick is over here. Tight, tight snare. This is the first song. This, is, this song's really kind of grabbing me a little bit now. I like what these are doing now. I wish I saw the HE5XX. Because that would be a good comparison, and these would probably kill him. Macy Gray Stripped. I love this record. One of the best recorded records in the last five years. Yeah, binaural recording. It's unreal. It's just crazy good. The bass feels really lifelike because it's so fast. It's not elevated. This is the kind of thing it likes. It's, it's good acoust acoustic music with some drive. Less so than The Rock. The Rock wasn't really doing it for me. First couple things I tried, I was like, hmm. This one's not challenging that upper mid-range, that like 4K area that's kind of little, just grates a little bit. Not anymore. I just went to a track that didn't have it. Sounds great. It's got finesse on this headphone. Okay, I'm going to stop it here. This is great. It's great. Um, out of the box, they, they, they didn't totally impress me. Um, they, but I did like the speed of these. The speed in the imaging is unquestionably very good for the price range. It's on, well, I had the HE5XX, the one that I gave away in the giveaway. Um, these are, these feel like a much more complete headphone to me sonically than uh, uh, the HE 5XX and they don't require the, the power that the 5XX did. I, I felt like these came into their own when I hit the Beatles song and then I went to Macy Gray I w and then it worked better for me than the ACDC and the Bee Gees which I started with just wasn't quite connecting I, like it was okay but it wasn't anything special once I got to the Beatles things really it, it, it sounded it had something to show me so it showed me something. We will, of course, do a complete sound check. And if you want a complete list of the music that I use to audition the Gold Planer GL 2000s, you can, you know, because I pull a lot of stuff out for time, you can head over to my Instagram page and, and check it out. So thanks for joining me today. And if you enjoyed today's What's in the Box, consider subscribing to the channel as a personal favor to me. Or don't, you know, I, I would like it, though. Your subscription breathes life into this community, and I certainly appreciate it. Now, next up, we have another unboxing. The folks at Audio 46 gave us another product that's been sitting on a pile of boxes over here for about a month. So I can't wait to rip that one open and find out what the heck they sent us. They never fail to impress. And then I've got one more unboxing after that. The folks at HiFi, our new partnership, sent us a product to review. Again, I have no idea what it is they sent, but it's sure to be a fun experience. And then we have to start decoding the sound of some of these products and find out what it is that makes them sing. Now, if you liked today's episode, feel free to give it a thumbs up, or if you think I totally chunked it, get out! You can do the other thing, but I can't blame you either way, and I will see you before you know it.